Today we're going to look at lesson 17a. So we're going to call this one 17a um, because your last lesson was 17. Today is 17a and then um, next in Math Excel you're going to do homework 17. And so set homework 17 in Math Excel combines lesson 17 and lesson 17a if that makes sense. Um, and then you'll move on to lesson 18 after that. So, um, lesson 17 and 17a, they're connected because um, you're solving systems algebraically. 17 was substitution, 17a is elimination. So again, this is in section 3.2 of your textbook. Your I can statement or learning objective is I can solve systems with elimination. And if we're talking about systems of linear equations, we're going to use elimination. I told you um, back in lesson 16 when each method would is the easiest. And so this method is the easiest when both equations are in standard form. And so that's that AX plus BY equals C. We just have one vocabulary term for this section. And, or this lesson, and it's the elimination method. So the elimination method says use the addition and subtraction properties of equality to eliminate a variable. So when we did substitution, our goal was to get rid of one of the variables by substituting in something else. So today our goal is to get rid of one of the variables by using addition and subtraction. Okay, so we know that when we have two variables in an equation, we can only solve for one variable at a time. And so that's how we solve systems. We have to get rid of one of the variables to solve for the other. So today we're going to use elimination. And I'm going to show you these addition and subtraction properties of equality. Properties of equality. So um, you might remember seeing me do this example back in Algebra 1 if you had me a couple of years ago. Um, but I think it's a great way to show these properties. So if you have 2 plus 3 equals 5, is that a true statement? Yes. What about 4 plus 5 equals 9? Is that a true statement? Yes. So the addition property of equality basically says if you add two true statements, you get a true statement. So let's see. So if we add these, we're going back to old school addition like you used to do way back when. 2 plus 4 is 6, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 9 is 14. Does 6 plus 8 equal 14? Yes. So that's that property, addition property of equality. Now let's do one with subtraction. So we already know that 2 plus 3 equals 5 is true, and 4 plus 5 equals 9 is true. So now if we subtract, and I'm going to put this bottom quantity in parentheses because we're subtracting this whole thing. It's not just minus 4. It's minus the entire equation. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Is negative 2 minus 2 equal to negative 4? Yes. So there's that subtraction property of equality. We're going to follow that same idea as we solve systems of equations. Okay, now I forgot to say this earlier, but as usual, um, I'm going faster in the video, so feel free to pause and rewind as you need to. Make sure you're writing down the notes, trying the examples with me. Okay, so here is a list of concrete steps that you can follow um, for these elimination problems. Now, some of you might remember how to do this from previous years, and you might just fly through it, and that's fine. Um, but if you don't remember how, these steps can be helpful. Or if you're just somebody that likes a concrete list of steps, these can be helpful, okay? But at least write them down so you do have, have them to look back at if you get stuck later. So, so step number one, make sure the equations are lined up correctly. You want the x's the y's, the equal signs, and those constants to be lined up. You want them to match vertically, okay? Then step number two, we need one of the variables, x or y, you can pick either one, to have the same coefficient, okay? And the signs don't really matter at this point. So 
we're not going to worry with the signs right now. We just want to make sure one of the variables has the same coefficient. So sometimes your equations are already ready to go. They have a variable with matching coefficients, and you can go on to step three. Sometimes you need to manipulate one or both equations. So you need to think, can we multiply one equation by something? Can we multiply both equations by something? Um, how can I make one of my variables have matching coefficients? Okay, and we'll look at how to do that um, when we get to the examples. But sometimes it's set up to where you just need to multiply one equation. Sometimes you need to multiply both. Okay, but if you can't tell, if you can't just look at the equations and decide they're good to go, I need to multiply one or I need to multiply both, you can always multiply by both. Okay, so when you, the last examples that we do, I'll show you how to multiply both equations by something, and that process works every single time. Okay, sometimes it's a little bit more work um, than others, but if you can't figure out what to do, you can always go straight to multiplying both. All right, step number three, you decide if you need to add or subtract. So we're looking at those variables with matching coefficients. If they have opposite signs, you're going to add. Because if you have a negative 3, let's just grab a color here. If you have negative 3 and 3 and you want those to go to 0, how do you take a negative 3 and a positive 3, how do you make those equal 0? You add them. Okay, so if you have opposite signs, you're just doing addition. If you have the same sign, so say you have 4 and 4, how can we get those to equal zero? You subtract. So when they have the same sign, you're using subtraction to get those var that variable eliminated. Okay, so step number four, after you decide if you're adding or subtracting, you do that operation. So you're either gonna add vertically like we did up here, or you're gonna subtract vertically and then solve for your first variable. So after you add or subtract, you should be left with a one-step equation. So we'll make a little note. That should be a one-step equation to solve. Step number five, you're going to take the value that you get in step four, plug it back into one of your original equations, and solve for your second variable. Sometimes you have to simplify. Sometimes it's ready to solve. It just kind of depends on what the equation looks like. Then last, step number six, you're going to make your answer. So if you have an x equals a number and y equals a number, we make that into an ordered pair. If you get something like 0 equals 4, it's no solution. 0 equals 0 is infinite solution. So remember, you do have three different solution types. Okay, now we're going to use those steps to solve some problems with elim using elimination. So we're going to have eight examples total. Um, we're going to look at some that are ready to add, some that are ready to subtract, some that you have to multiply one equation by something, and then two where you have to multiply both equations by something. I will do the first one completely for you, and then I would like for you to pause the video and try the next example um, on your own, and then come back and check your answers with me. So we're starting with number one. We have negative x minus 7y equals 7 and x minus 4y equals 4. So those are lined up. We have x's, y's, equal signs, constants. So we're good to go to the next step. So step number two, we need one of the variables to have the same coefficient. So we'll look at x. What are the coefficients in front of x? And remember, we're not thinking about signs here. We're just thinking about that number. So in front of x, we have a 1 and a 1. In front of set, in front of y, we have a 7 and a 4. So which variable has matching coefficients? x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box in or circle my x's. So that's the variable that I'm focused on eliminating. I'm going to get those x's to disappear in this system. Okay. So step number three, do I need to add or subtract? So I'm looking in this box. I'm looking at my x's. We have a negative one and a positive one. Are those opposites or the same? Opposites. So opposites mean we add. So we're going to add vertically. So negative 1x plus 1x cancels out. Okay. That, mean, that tells me that I had matching coefficients and I chose the correct sign. 
because one of the variables, the variables that we have box, are disappearing. Now, what's negative 7y plus negative 4y? Negative 11y. 7 plus 4 is 11. Now, so we did our addition vertically. We're going to solve this one step. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 11. And we get y equals negative 1. Okay, so there's my y. Now, I'm going to choose one of these equations. I'm going to plug this back in and solve for y. You can choose either equation. It doesn't matter which one. You pick the one that looks easiest to you. I'm going to pick the second equation, that x minus 4y equals 4, because it has less negatives. And that's the only reason I picked it. If you pick the first one, it would work. Um, some people like to always choose the first. Some people always choose the second. Some people choose which one looks easiest. That's completely up to you, however you want to go about it. So I know that y is negative 1. So now I'm using my substitution that we used back in the previous lesson. So x minus 4, we're going to take that negative 1 and plug it in for y. Now I'm going to simplify. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. All right, I'm going to solve that by subtracting 4 from both sides, and I get x equals 0. So I've got my x, I've got my y. My final answer is 0, comma, negative 1. Okay, so that's why I'm going to circle or box as my final answer. Okay, here is example number 2. It's very similar to example number 1. Take a second, pause the video, see what you can do. All right, so let's see what you've got. So we need to make sure they're lined up. So x is y is equal signs constants. We're good. We need one of the variables to have a, the same coefficient. So we have 3 and 10, 3 and 3. So which variable am I going to circle or box? My y's. All right. Now, I have to decide if I need to add or subtract. So looking in that box at what I circled or box, do I have the opposite signs or same signs? Opposite. Opposite signs means we're going to add. Okay. So 3x plus a negative 10x is negative 7x. Negative 3y plus a positive 3y cancels out. That means we've done our job correctly. Negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. And we're left with a one-step equation. Is that what I should have at this point? Yeah. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 7, and we get x equals 2. Okay. So now I've got my x. I need to find my y. I'm going to use one of these equations, plug 2 back in and solve for y. So I'm going to use this first equation just because it looks easier to me. You could use the other one and we should still get the same answer. So 3x minus 3y equals negative 15. I know that x is 2. So 3 times 2 minus 3y equals negative 15. 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 minus 3y is negative 15. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, and I get negative 3y equals negative 21. And I'm going to come over to the side just because um, I don't want to take up any more lines. So divide both sides by negative 3, and I get y equals 7. So now I have an x and a y. I'm going to make my final answer. So 2 comma 7 in parentheses, circle or box it so we can see it easily. All right, and I'm going to draw a little line because both of these systems were ready to add. You had matching coefficients, opposite signs. They were ready to add and go from there. Okay, here's example number three. It's lined up. Find the variable that has a matching coefficient. Let's see, we have 6 and 1, 2 and 2. That means we're going to look at our y's because they have matching coefficients. Now, I, 
do they have the same sign or opposite signs? They have the same sign, so that means we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract that whole bottom equation, so make sure you have your subtraction sign and your parentheses. Now, you can do this subtraction a couple different ways. You can go one at a time, 6x minus a negative x. Okay, so 6x minus a negative. We know minus a negative changes to addition. So that's really 6x plus x, which is 7x. Okay, 2y minus 2y cancels. And then 18 minus a negative 10, we know minus a negative changes to plus, so that's going to be 28. Okay, so you can do it that way. Or, and I'll show you this on the next example, when you're subtracting, what, what that means is you're going to change all of these signs. So you could go through and make this one addition, this one subtraction, and this one addition. And you it'll work out the same way. Whichever way is easiest for you works for me. We divide both sides by 7 and get x equals 4. So there's our x value. Now we need our y. So again, you pick one of these equations, whichever one you want to, plug 4 in and solve. So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use the bottom one just because I want to show you something. So negative x plus 2y equals negative 10. x is 4, so it's negative 4 plus 2y equals negative 10. Add 4, and we get 2y equals negative 6. Divide by 2, and we get y equals negative 3. So we have an x, we have a y. So our x is 4, our y is negative 3. So we have 4 comma negative 3, and that's our final answer. Okay, here's example number four. Pause the video, give it a try, see what you can do. Now let's check your answers. So everything's lined up correctly. Find, your, find matching coefficients if there are any. Yep, our x's both have six, so those match. Do they have the same sign or opposite signs? Opposite. I mean, opposite. They have the same sign, so we're going to subtract. I'm sorry. In my head, I was thinking same, but I said opposite. So those are the same. So we're going to subtract. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what I was talking about in this example. So if I'm subtracting, that means I'm changing all of these signs. So that changes this 6 into a negative, this 4 to a positive, and that 22 to a negative. Um, and so... When I flip those, when I change all the signs, that means I change everything on the bottom. And so I've changed these signs, and now I can just add straight down. So 6 minus 6 is 0. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5y. Negative 18 and a negative 22 is negative... 40. All right. So we divide both sides by negative 5, and we get y equals 8. Pick one of these equations. Plug in your 8. Um, I'm going to use the first one, 6x minus 9y equals negative 18. So 6x minus 9 times 8 equals negative 18. So 6x minus 72 equals negative 18 plus 72, we get 6x equals 54, and so I divide both sides by 6, and I get x equals 9. So now I have an x and I have a y, so my final answer is 9 comma 8. All right, and again, I'm going to make a line here because these equations were ready to subtract. Okay, so number five is a little bit different. So everything's lined up, and now we need to look for matching coefficients. So we have an 8 and a 4, a 1 and a 2. 
So none of those match. So you need to decide if you can change one of the, you can look at the X's, see if you can change one into the other, and then the same with the Y's. So I'm going to start with my X's. So I have eight and four. Can I, I'm more thinking whole numbers, so think in terms of whole numbers. Can I turn an eight into a four or a four into an eight? Yeah, I can easily turn a four into an eight. How can I do that? Multiply by two. Okay, and remember the signs don't matter at this point. We'll worry about those next. So this first equation, I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to bring it over. Negative 8x minus y equals negative 16. Bring this new equation over. 4x times 2 is 8x. Negative 2y times 2 is negative 4y. 28 times 2 is 56. Okay, now, do I have matching coefficients? Yes. So those are, that's the variable that I'm going to focus on. I'm going to look at my x. Do they have opposite signs or the same? They have opposites, so we're going to add negative 8x plus 8x cancels. Negative y plus a negative 4y is negative 5y. Negative 16 plus 56 is 40. Divide both sides by negative 5, and we get y equals negative 8. Okay, so this process is the exact same as all the problems that we've done before. The only thing different here is that we had to multiply one equation by a constant to get matching coefficients. Now, I'm going to pick one of these equations, plug y back in, and solve for x. I'm going to use the first equation, so negative 8x minus y equals negative 16. I'm going to take this negative 8, plug it in for y. That's negative 8x minus a negative 8 equals negative 16. We know that changes to a positive 8, so we'll subtract 8 from both sides and get negative 8x equals negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 8, and we get x equals 3. So I've got an X, I've got a Y. My final answer is going to be 3 comma negative 8. Okay, number 6 is very similar to number 5. Pause the video, give this one a try, come back and check your answers. All right, on this one, we don't have matching coefficients, so we need to make some. So let's take a look. We've got 7 and 2. Can we change a 7 into a 2 or a 2 into a 7? No. Let's look at our y's. We've got 7 and 1. Can I turn a 7 into a 1 or a 1 into a 7? Yeah. I can change the 1 to a 7 by multiplying the bottom equation by 7. Okay? Now, it just so happened that on examples 5 and 6, we multiplied the bottom equation by something. Um, and that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you need to multiply the top. Before we were um, eliminating the x's, this time we're looking at the y's. So where you multiply and what you multiply by really depends on what your equations look like for any given problem. It just happened to work out that 5 and 6, we're multiplying the bottom. But no, that doesn't always happen. So number 6, bring over that first equation, negative 7 plus 7, negative 7x plus 7y equals 21. Bring over our new equation on the bottom. We have um, 14x, negative 7y, and negative 28. All right, so this time our matching coefficients are the y's. That's what I'm looking at. Do they have the opposite signs or the same? Opposite. So we're going to add both equations. Negative 7x plus 14x is 7x. Those cancel like we wanted them to. 21 plus a negative 28 is negative 7. Divide both sides by 7, and we get x equals negative 1. Now, we're going to pick one of these equations, plug that negative 1 in, and solve for y. I'm going to choose the bottom one just because it looks easier to me. 2x minus y equals negative 4. Negative 1 goes for x this time. So 2 times negative 1 minus y equals negative 4. 
That's negative 2 minus y equals negative 4. Add 2 to both sides, and we get negative y equals um, negative 2, so y equals 2. And we've got an x, we've got a y. Our final equation, or our final answer, final answer is negative 1, 2. Okay, right, now, just like before, I'm going to draw a line. Um, and problems 5 and 6, those you had to multiply one equation. Okay, now, if you weren't sure on those, if you look at a problem and you're not sure if you need to multiply one or both, you can always d multiply both, which is what we're going to do for examples 7 and 8. Okay, here's example number 7. Negative 10x minus 10y is ne equals negative 20. Negative 14x minus 14y equals negative 28. Sorry, I messed that up. Negative 28. All right, so on this one, um, they're lined up. We look for matching coefficients. We have 10 and 14, 10 and 14. Um, and then, can we make a 10 a 14 or a 14 a 10? No, we can't. So, you can do a couple different things here. You can find the least common multiple of 10 and 14, and you can multiply each equation by something to get that number. Um, and you can, you can do that if you want to. Usually, I say the easiest thing to do is to pick a variable, crisscross the coefficients, and go from there. So, um, like you can pick, say I want to pick x. All right. I know I'm going to multiply both equations by something. So I have 10 and 14. So 10's on the top, so that's what I'm going to multiply on the bottom. 14's on the bottom, so that's what I'm going to multiply on the top. So do you see how I just kind of crisscross those? And so that when I multiply, those numbers will match. Okay. You can do that every single time if you want to. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you want to. So for this one, I'm just going to crisscross. So negative 10x times 14 is negative 140x. Negative 10y times 14 is negative 140y. Negative 20 times 14 is negative 280. All right, on the bottom, negative 14x times 10 is negative 140x. Negative 14y times 10 is negative 140y. And then negative 28 times 10 is negative 280. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about what we got here in just a second. But here, I didn't worry about the signs. I just did the coefficients. You could um, get more complex with it. You could change one of these to a negative, which would make one of your equations positive, And then you could add. Here, I, all the signs are the same, so we're going to have to subtract. Um, there's really a lot of different options you have here. You can do it a lot of different ways and still get the same answer or the correct answer when you get finished. Now, some of you might have noticed a pattern over here, but we should definitely see something on this side. What do you notice? Everything is exactly the same, okay? So that's gonna, that tells us that it's a different solution type. That tells us that it's going to be infinite solutions because everything is exactly the same, okay? Now, if you didn't see that right off the bat, we could keep going. Here we have matching coefficients, and here we have matching coefficients. We're just going to pick one. Like if I use the x's, those are the same sign, so I'm going to subtract. In this case, since they're all subtraction, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative. Get plus, 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 and I'm going to combine. Those combine to give me zero. Those actually combine to give me zero. Those combine to give me zero. So we're left zero equals zero. That is a true statement. So your final answer is infinite solutions. You can type that out or write it out. You can abbreviate whatever. If it's multiple choice in Math Excel, it'll give you infinite solutions as an answer. Okay, now let's look at example number eight. This is our last one. And everything's lined up. We don't have matching coefficients. Um, we can't turn a 7 into a 9, or a 9 into a 7, a 5 into an 8, an 8 into a 5. So you just need to pick a variable. You can pick whichever one you want to. It doesn't matter to me. Um, you can 
decide which one's going to be easier. You can look at the signs to help you if you want to. Again, a lot of different options you can take here and still get the correct answer. So I'm going to use the Y's just because 5 and 8 are smaller than 7 and 9. Not by much, but they are a little bit smaller, so I'm going to work with those. Okay? All right, so I know I have to multiply both equations. So I have 5 and 8, so I'm going to kind of crisscross. So I'm going to multiply by 5 on the bottom, 8 on the top. I'm not going to worry about signs. I don't like to worry with signs here, but you can if you want to. You can make one of them a negative. Um, I mean, you could really even do both negative if you want to, but that's not going to help you any. Um, if you wanted to make one of them negative, that would change the operation that you're going to do over here. But again, completely up to you. All right. Okay, sorry, I had a minor interruption. So negative 7x times 8 is negative 56x. 5y times 8 is positive 40y. And then negative 12 times 8 is negative 96. All right, on the bottom, negative 9x times 5 is negative 45x. 8y times 5 is 40y. And then... 17 or negative 17 times 5 is negative 85. All right, now we do have matching coefficients. Those are our y's, so that's where I'm going to focus and decide which operation. So I have the same sign, so I am going to subtract. Okay, so negative 56 minus a negative 45, which is the same as addition, gives me negative 11x. 40y minus 40y cancels, and then negative 96 plus 85 gives me a negative 11. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 11, and then I get x equals 1. Okay, so I've got my x. I'm going to choose one of these equations. I'm going to go back to one of my original just because they're smaller numbers, easier to work with. You could use one of these and still get the same answer. You just have to be be cautious with your signs. Um, but I like to choose one of the originals just because they're smaller numbers. Okay, so I'm going to use negative 7x plus 5y equals negative 12. I'm going to plug this one in for x. So negative 7 times 1 plus 5y equals negative 12. Negative 7 plus 5y equals negative 12. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I get 5y equals negative 5. So y equals negative 1. So I have an x, I have a y, and my final answer is 1 comma negative 1. All right. Now, use these examples to do your assignment for the day. As always, if you have questions or need help, send me an email, hit Ask My Instructor, um, talk to me in the Google Meet, whatever you need to do. Um, but I'm here if you need me. Have a great day.